jump in today's big topic. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Amit. Uh, I don't know if he's here. Ah, he's here, right? I'd like to thank Amit for inspiring me to to uh, take this up a little seriously. Uh, this is actually a follow through with what we did last week, which was called inflammation. Now, we know that when when the body is trying to defend itself against a virus uh, or anything, what happens is the antibodies in your system go and jump in, okay? And this causes inflammatory problems. I mean, it gets inflamed, right? Now, the cortisol is something that does get released to help suppress this, okay? So, it's a natural thing. It will always come out, okay? Now, this hormone is secreted by a very important gland called the pituitary gland and it release, it gets released along with adrenaline. So, anytime adrenaline is released, now why do you need that? In case of an extreme amount of stress, maybe you suddenly got scared or maybe there's a fire somewhere or maybe there's some kind of riot going on, immediately you get scared. Adrenaline is pumped into your system but along with adrenaline, cortisol is also released. It's another hormone. Okay? So, it is also released to conflame, uh, to contain any inflammatory uh, scenario. For example, let's say you have a toothache and maybe your gum gets a little swollen. What happens is cortisol is also gets released. So just having a toothache, maybe I can bear the pain, but biologically, a lot of things are actually happening. Okay. Now, this, uh, I think I spelled hormone wrong, but anyway, it's known as, a, cortisol is known as a stress hormone. Whenever you're under stress, which means physical stress, you might have worked too hard. Maybe your car broke down and you're walking 10 kilometers and there's no puncture shop or whatever. I'm just giving you an example. Stress. It can be physical and it can be emotional stress. Emotional stress can be, we'll come to that. Okay, I'll come to that later. So, uh, let me just move this out of the way if this is coming. Okay, so as you can see over here, this is uh, the uh, chemical structure of the of the hormone of co cortisol. Okay, so stress is one of the big items which actually gets this released. Now, it can be emotional or physical stress. Okay, now what are these things? Financial problems. Oh, God, I got this. I have to pay this huge bill. Oh, my EMI is due. <coughs> Oh, I owe somebody, I've taken a loan and I have to pay so much of debt and I'm doing it's financial stress, for example. Work pressure. Oh gosh, I've got to deliver this thing tomorrow and I haven't even finished 10%. In. Even lack of sleep can give you stress. Okay? So don't think you're a hero and a champion. Say, oh, I only slept five hours. and I'm, I'm Superman. No. Your body needs roughly around eight hours of sleep. So if you're not getting that requisite amount of sleep, it will automatically create a different kind of stress in your body. And once that happens, cortisol gets released. But what happens when cortisol, what is the negative side of having excess cortisol in your body? Okay. So this happens when the body is in a fight or flight mode. You can know, a fight means either I fight or I run away or I just succumb to the, or I just kind of just pass out or go into a coma or whatever. So in such situations, cortisol is released to actually, uh, you know, give, give your body the, the, the necessary fight back. But the problem is that the cortisol, like any other hormone, is going to stay around for some time in your blood. It's not going to disappear the minute everything goes away. It's still going to be there. Okay? Now, what it does, it prevents the protein from being absorbed by the muscle. Now, as you know, a lot of your body is made of protein and it's made of muscle, the skin and there's so many things that are there. But especially when it comes to the muscle, it is what gives you, defines your shape. It helps hold your skin and keep it firm. Uh, it, it does a lot. Of, the muscle is extremely important. Okay, And if that protein doesn't get into your muscle, your muscle will start to deteriorate. It will start to become smaller, thinner and all these things start to happen. So that's, a, that's when you're you start to age faster than you should. So cortisol disrupts the ability for protein to get absorbed. And in the process, visceral fat, which is the fat that goes around your organs, starts to increase. 
and big symptom is also getting big belly fat. Okay, this is kind of very well documented across, and uh, these are some uh, some of the big things that happen in a prolonged state. When you continue to do this, it will also start to reduce your bone density. So having excess cortisol in your system is all because of stress. And now you can understand why they say stress is a killer. Okay, it's not just an emotional killer. It's not something that just disrupts your mind. It starts to disrupt the metabolism of your body. Okay. Now, when excess cortisol is getting generated, it puts strain on the glands. And these glands require vitamin B and specifically vitamin B6. And uh, so what happens is that starts to get depleted. Okay. So everything that you know, and you would have observed in a lot of the in a lot of the uh, uh, course, courseware that you'd have seen, there's always this domino effect. It starts with something small and then it pushes another thing and then it pushes another thing and pushes another thing. For example, if you're, if you're eating very high glycemic index food and you're eating without a schedule, what happens is your insulin goes up. Once insulin goes up, the whole cascade of things happen. Okay? And now similarly, something like this happens when stress is there on your system. Okay? Now, if you have too much of cortisol being produced, especially if it's produced too much in the night, what happens is it will start to affect your sleep because cortisol will keep you awake and it will keep you charged and it will demand that you give more sugar. Okay, so That means you'll, you'll also get hungry. You might start feeling weak and giddy because you know the, the body is not able to supply the requisite amount of uh, of glucose that it needs because it needs much more than the it's a stress it's a kind of a panic situation okay so what can we do about it i mean oh so we've heard all the horror stories uh you know go to jail and go to hospital never okay, there are ways to get out of it very important is to get the right amount of sleep okay sleep Extra sleep does not mean that you are a lazy person. Extra sleep doesn't mean you will get fat. Okay, they'll say, oh, he's lazy. And therefore, when you're lazy, you get fat. It's all a myth. Okay, laziness does not produce overweight. Okay, or anything else. So get a lot of sleep. And do some things that give you, give your mind a very pleasant feeling. Like if you have a hobby, okay, your mind will be engrossed in it. And a hobby always soothes, you know, it soothes the rhythm of the mind. So have a hobby. It's a good thing. Take care of a pet. If you have a pet at home and, you know, when a pet, when you, when you start to comb, let's say you have a dog and you comb its hair or you give it a bath, the dog is so loving and playful with you at that point of time. And it brings you a certain amount of joy and that reduces the kind of stress that you might have. A, another good way is to meditate. Meditate will help you slow down your thinking. This is very useful in case you're in some kind of emotional stress. Okay? Get sunshine. Sunshine is also extremely important. The sensation of the warmth, the, uh, the spectrum of light also helps you create a better rhythm in your mind. Okay? And uh, if that doesn't help, watch comedy movies. Okay? Every time you feel a little out, go and watch your good old Laurel and Hardy, Mickey Mouse, uh, Bugs Bunny, whatever is there, just watch something. Lucy Show, I don't know if you guys would have seen that in the early days. Or watch any language, whatever uh, you think. Uh, you know, YouTube has a lot of them. Go and watch them. Uh, do easy exercises. Don't do anything stressful. Uh, just walking up and down or, or just sitting up and standing or doing some very, very easy exercise can also help change the rhythm of your mind. Okay? You can also have a relaxing bath and lavender. Lavender, you might find in, you'll find them in, in body washes. You'll find them in soaps. You'll find even lavender oil. Uh, this is something that aroma is really good and it helps relax the body. Some people actually take lavender uh, essential oil and just roll a little on the pillow and that aroma actually helps soothe the mind. Okay. Even chamomile tea, the, the, the aroma of the tea, it's not the tea that you drink, but the aroma of the chamomile can also be very relaxing. So uh, perfumes and a, and a couple of these essential oils are actually quite good for... Sorry, I think I have a little blip on my camera here. So hang on. 
Okay. So I don't think you need to see me right now, but okay, there we are. Uh, now the things that you can have, supplements that you can have is vitamin B is quite essential because there is a lot of strain when your body is doing cortisol uh, secretion. So you need to supplement it. Otherwise, uh, it will go into another panic and then you'll try to produce more co uh, cortisol. So it's a vicious cycle. Omega-3 and magnesium. I think uh, Sunil pointed out earlier that magnesium, uh, is, you know, lack of it can cause a lot of problems. Magnesium actually helps you in, a, in, in about 300 different ways. So I think you can write a book only on just what magnesium does for the body. So it's really huge. All you have to do is get a couple of, you know, 0 0.1 mgs of it, which you'll get in uh, rock salt. Uh, you'll get it in uh, multi mineral multivitamin tablets. You'll find them in a lot of foods. So go and look up foods. Uh, it's a simple, I've given you a link even in the courseware as to uh, where you can find foods and what their composition is. Now some very good herbs. Uh, is the Korean ginseng okay? Is a is a good is a good herb to have with you, and India's most popular and most effective herb is what we call ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is has a lot of uh, medicinal properties, uh, and it's uh, it's very tolerant. I mean, people have a lot of tolerance for it, so nobody has any side effects from this. Uh, this ex helps you extremely, and uh, uh, it's an extremely good herb to have. You just need to have probably, you know, one dose of it a day or maybe two. Recommended is two kind of portions of it. Uh, extremely beneficial in many, many ways. Uh, it does not only help you reduce cortisol, it, it is shown to also help uh, uh, improve your complexion. It, it helps you, uh, your hair growth. And I'll tell you, there's a whole list of things. So it's a wonder, it's a wonder herb that we get in India and it's an abundance and not extremely expensive. You can get it from many companies. Uh, Himalayan has a lot of these. So you can just do a little Google on it and you can see what are the benefits of Aswagandha. But for, especially for cortisol generation, you need to have Ashwagandha. So remember, you've had, maybe you've had a bad accident. You've fallen down. You've scraped yourself. You're just recovering from a very bad uh, bout of flu or maybe you've had you know, a bad case of stomach upset or something. And you're on the drugs because when you're on drugs and antibiotics, your cortisol and everything is going to get high. So you may want to augment yourself with ashwagandha. Okay. Now, the only thing is ashwagandha does lower your blood pressure a bit. So, so immediately after you've had ashwagandha, try not to have anything intoxicating. That means uh, don't drink heavily as soon as you've had ashwagandha. If you tend to take alcohol or don't take any cough syrup or don't take any sleeping medicine, uh, especially because it will further reduce your blood pressure. So that's your only, but you have to take it in very large quantities for it to have such an effect. But as a safeguard, they just warn you, don't have anything intoxicating after having, immediately after having it. You can have it a couple of hours later, it's not a problem, but just don't have it immediately. Another thing is when you have high cortisol, stop or reduce coffee and especially after 6 p.m. in the evening stop having coffee uh, because the coffee will also not help reduce your cortisol level okay? caffeine and it will also act as a stimulant so if cortisol is already getting produced it will start getting overproduced so it's best to reduce or stop your coffee after like sunset for example so towards the night you shouldn't have any this caffeine in your system because now, what happens is because the cortisol levels are high, the body is going to demand glucose. And maybe the body cannot supply it. It cannot convert the fat back into sugar, which demands all the protein back into sugar. So that entire uh, you know, metabolism of, it, of the sugar coming back to your may take too much of time. And the cortisol will start to slow you down because it's demanding the sugar for it to, for it to move forward. So you may want to eat a little rice or, or carbs. So you cannot cut your carbs down to zero ever. You need to have, like I said, the body's composition is 1%. So if your body absorbs 1% of that carbohydrate or 2%, it's fine. So you still need to give your body some type of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, rice, 
uh, you know, bread, chapati, whatever. Uh, sometimes even uh, noodles or whatever that that is. But again, like I said, avoid maida. Okay, avoid any bleached product. A lot of products that we get today are heavily bleached or processed so that they become white, like maida, corn flour, or uh, sugar is also a processed food. You know, the white sugar, sugar is not white. It's processed so that it becomes white. And even scarier are, are some of the refined oils. Okay, so uh, it's always good to stick with natural oils like coconut oil, ghee, butter, and maybe cold-pressed oils that we had now. Good old days, uh, grandfather's days, it, they would have two, you know, maybe a, a, a bullock, two bullocks going around with a wheel and a grinding stone and they would extract the oil. This is actually the, the best oil. And uh, if you see the practices of what our ancestors did, uh, they had far more nutritious and far more healthy habits than we do now. Our modernization has seemed to have, we have gone in the wrong tangent, but don't worry, the world is coming back. Everyone is beginning to realize that you know, some of the old ways are some of the best ways. And we have to use technology so that we can make the old ways a little easier to do. Okay? So I'm sure we can do that with a couple of machines instead of having two animals running around in circles. So, okay? So uh, you, need to, you, you need to always have this thing in mind. Through, don't starve. Okay, starving is one of the worst things that you can do. And as you can see, uh, the, the, the more nutrients you get into your system and the balance, the right balance of many things will help you actually live a much more fruitful and much, much more, uh, you know, active and dynamic life. It will help you battle a lot of things that would otherwise harm you. Okay, uh, so, so at any point of time, uh, you have to adjust yourself so that when you're scheduled your meals correctly, in between your meals, you don't feel hungry. Okay, that's really important. And when your schedule time, you are feeling hungry, you eat and you've, you've closed your appetite for that moment, it's great. Okay, so the thing is, never go into a sacrifice saying, I'm not going to eat, I'm going to starve. Never ever get into the situation, can uh, cause problems. I'm not saying that this is applicable to everyone, for, but for most people, uh, never keep yourself uh, you know, completely empty and don't get into a place where you're really i have to eat i have to eat no i don't no if i eat i'll put on weight and now when you start thinking about that battle in your mind itself that confusion in your mind is going to create cortisol again so you're back to square one okay so so it's uh okay so like i said i'm trying to keep a 45 minute time uh slot on this and i think uh, uh we're up for the last 10 minutes and i'm open up to any questions that you might have uh, about anything. So this is, I'm done with the uh, with the small lecture on cortisol. So any questions, I'm open. You can take the mic or you can type in the chat. Okay. Sir, uh, can I ask? Certainly. Huh? Yeah. Sir, actually, uh, I, uh, you said that the sun rays also, you know, uh, go on sunshine. In the remedies part, you said sunshine yeah. is the remedy. Yeah. Uh, I have allergy for sun, as I told you before. So right. uh, taking vitamin D tablets will again, uh, you know, help that. Or yeah, or it's, or it's sun rays it's, are needed. Yeah, the rays are needed. It's the infrared and the ultraviolet. I'm not saying you stand and get baked. Just get a few minutes, just a few minutes, maybe one minute or two minutes, standing out in the sun and just feeling that and getting back inside is good enough. But do it more often if you can't stand long. At least you can okay. stand for sixty seconds, right? Or a minute or two, yeah. you can stand. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good enough. At least something. Okay. Uh, uh, now, just to remember that that sunshine also creates vitamin D as part of it. Uh, the fairer you are, the lesser amount of time you need to stand out in the sun. Okay. So people who are darker shades, and especially people from, uh, you know, dark skin people from African continent, a lot of them suffer from osteoporosis. Because they actually need to, they have, their bodies have been built to actually stand through the harsh sunshine. Okay, and that, that's how they genetically, and so the melanin actually blocks out a lot of that. And for them, they need what we may need 10 or 15 minutes, they need half an hour to 40 minutes of sunshine. So that's the only thing you have to remember. Okay, sir. And uh, sir, uh, this, uh, huh, you said about starving. 
just wanted to know sometimes um you know i am i am a bit confused about what is emotional hunger and uh, what is uh, you know uh, what is uh, actually if i am hungry you know uh, true hungry true hunger so how do i differentiate between um that uh, these two things okay that's a kind of a good question to ask okay uh, so how do you differentiate okay now this um okay now if you're talking about uh, uh emotional hunger now emotional hunger can be there's something that you wanted to do like for example let's say you wanted to go and play a game of cricket or maybe you wanted to go swimming but you just been postponing it postponing it and you say oh i just want to listen to some i want to go to a concert and listen to some music okay so that is uh, uh it is an emotional necessity and it's emotional kind of a desire that you have and uh, how do you actually find out is it something that's going to be pause is it something that's not going to harm you for example i go for the music concert uh is it going to be overall a good thing for me or is it going to be a bad thing okay now of course okay. you can have emotional need for anything else there are other things that you know maybe sexual gratification or anything i don't know whatever you want to call it if it's going to cause you harm then it's something that you say it may it 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 may or emotionally affect you so 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 we all have desires and we have to be discerning about it uh at the same time you if you say a physical uh kind of a uh, thing that you, you you may need let's say i want to go and eat 10 kilos of jalebi okay now yeah. yeah so you know that if you eat 10 kilos of jalebi something bad is going to happen to you right right so then you've got to say is it indulgence or not so i mean these are finer parts of life and everyone has a free will so if if i mean i i, I don't know where to draw the line but i just say you draw the line where you think it's going to affect impact your life in a negative way now okay. everything you do is going to affect you somehow negatively yes that's a possibility mm-hmm. but is it is the pros outweigh the cons and that's all you've got to say i'm going to gain 10 things but maybe okay one thing i'm going to lose for example i may want to see a beautiful movie first day first show and it's an it's an emotional need and i want to go and see it first day first show but the ticket is like you know 10000 rupees and then you say okay so the you know i'm going to fulfill that desire but i'm going to my bank balance is going to be down by 10000 is it worth doing that's about it you just ask yourself is it worth doing so differentiating Sir, uh, is all this. yeah go ahead yeah that emotional hunger part is i i heard that you know uh, something which is troubling you emotionally if you are you know low then you want to eat more that is one part and right. another part another part is also like you know uh, maybe it is a fake hunger like uh, i uh, fake hunger sir like you know now i i am full but still you know uh, sir, uh, before i used to do when i was not a devotee you know uh, okay. i used to eat full in my at my home and while going on the way again eat some biscuits cookies it's like uh, you know being it so that is also another kind of you know overeating or like that so those you know how much we are hungry and all uh, of course it is it depends on a person to person basis sir so uh, on a principle basis would you help me uh, understand because sometimes when i feel hungry i feel i should starve why to you know it might be emotional <laughs> so i just <laughs> ah so, so you are trying to find out if it's real hunger or it's an emotional hunger. you are saying is the mind yeah. to, telling you to eat or is your body telling to you to yes, eat yes sir yes sir yes sir okay uh, that's why when you make your when you that's why in this program when you make and your also blueprint. i mean just to add sir so that i'll get yeah. proper answer sometimes i may feel bored also I, i have nothing to do sometimes i may feel so because of that i want to eat something to enjoy my senses you know that may also be there so is it real hunger or a bit of you know uh, 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 yeah i, I got a, i got also. a question i got a question yeah. i try to yes. try to uh, yes. be articulate in my answer uh, okay, okay. so uh, the, the thing that you brought up which is what's a very f- famous uh, term in india it's called time pass okay okay yeah. all these little snacks that you have they call them time pass okay and it uh, obviously tells you because you have nothing better to do you eat okay <laughs> now these things come up because a of social conditioning 
Okay, social conditioning is one of the things that that actually contribute to this because you see a lot of people doing it, and they'll actually yeah. call it time pass. So what are you having? I'm having time pass. Time pass means he's eating some junk food at the side. Yeah. Okay. Now we've become we've we've just got impressioned to it, and we feel it's a very normal thing to do, and there's nothing wrong in doing it. So we've got, uh, we've it's become a socially acceptable habit. Okay. So that that's you've just been influenced. So now. it's like if you watch too many murder movies and killing and fighting after some time you'll think hey killing is okay no problem the guy died is died you get desensitized to the problem okay so that that is one factor the other factor is 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 a quite a very very deep rooted factor the point that you're actually use you know when when you when, when you're just eating because you just want to eat and your mind says i just go and eat something man you know you're your bored or your uh, you know you you got you know what the biggest problem with everyone is that you have not set any goal in your life now if you don't set goals for yourself, this is where goals make a big difference you want to achieve something i'm not saying it has to be a monetary goal it can be an academic goal it can be maybe i want to help about a thousand people or whatever it is there has to be some background of what you want to do with your life okay if there is no backdrop of what is your mission in life then what happens these things will just come in because idle mind is a devil's workshop they say so when your mind is empty and it's got nothing busy to think about or do then what happens the first thing it says okay you know you are uncomfortable okay now why does this discomfort come in the brain we have two centers it's called the pain center and it's called the pleasure center and they always try to be equal now a lot of things will affect your pain center boredom for example i have nothing to do so your pain center goes up because i am bored i want to do i'm not even sleepy so there's a sort of anxiety okay and that little anxiety will push it up pushes your cortisol up also so cortisol will also come and tell you boss you need to eat something so that will also affect you biologically then for for the for the when the pain center goes up the body will try and push the pleasure center up okay they have to be at the same level and what happens is after some time the pleasure center falls down and the pain center is still taking its time to come down so again you are forced to bring your pleasure center up as the years go by your pain center keeps climbing higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and finally it reaches a very very high point okay so when it reaches that high point what we got to do is kind of a detox okay and this is more of a mental detox than it is a, even you know cigarette smoking or alcoholism is more of a mental pro, it's a mental game rather than a physical game okay the physical game is actually just your mind is your pain pleasure and pain centers are just keep uh, you know attacking you so what you have to do is don't stop something immediately okay or somebody who snacks and you're a little bored instead of eating 1 kilo of chips try and eat half and when some the next day what do you do you half you try and make it quarter and quarter you make it 100 and then you bring it down if you don't do that your pain center is always going to be high and you have not kept so you have to bring it down as the way you brought it up step by step you have to step by step bring it down so there is no overnight solution to this problem you have to consciously make an effort and to make a consciously make an effort you have to have a backdrop of what is your mission in life so that you can keep reminding yourself hey instead of eating the snack let me go and write a letter to somebody or let me make a plan for tomorrow to go and distribute some books or magazines or old newspaper or help some old ladies cross the street whatever it is keep that backdrop in your mind because it 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 let least keep your mind busy on something important for you to do so have some kind of always have a mission uh to do something for somebody else or for yourself even for yourself uh, or maybe you might want to think about i want to learn a new hobby what all do i need to do so try and find yourself where you can get engaged and and keep uh keep keep a reminder for yourself so whenever you get this uh uh urge to actually you know eat or binge or do something crazy like this uh try and remember a symbol uh you can keep any symbol in your mind for example you can uh you can put the symbol of uh of uh, i don't know maybe a maybe a maybe a uh 
you know, a ball or maybe a, a cube or maybe, a, you know, a stick. Anytime this comes up, let that image come into your head. And please attach that image to your goal. Okay? That should be a related image. So let's say your, your uh, idea is to, to play hockey every day. Then keep an image of a hockey stick. So anytime you feel hungry, just remember the hockey stick. Okay? So this is something you can do. So you have to use a lot of symbolic uh, relationship between what is your mission in life and what are the things that are distracting you, which you think are not good for you. And let that be, as soon as you think about it, the first thing that should come is, let's say, hockey stick. Or let's say you're somebody who wants to, to, to read uh, uh, some religious books or imagine the picture of a book. And anytime you feel hungry, just remember that book, that image of the book in your head. It takes a little practice, but you'll get to it. And then, of course, don't suppress. I know I'm hungry. I want to eat it. Binge a little bit. Eat half of what you used to. Just be a little conscious. Okay, I, I'll eat, but I won't eat too much. So satisfy the satiation of the brain saying, I need to, I want to eat that potato chip. I want to eat that gulab jamun. I want to eat that jalebi. Don't go on a binge. Just eat one and then keep remembering the hockey stick or the book or whatever that symbol is uh, as you're doing it. And you know, slowly you'll, you lose your attachment to it. Okay. And while you're losing your attachment to it, you're not letting it jump into anxiety. You're just slowly bringing it down. And when you slowly bring it down, your pleasure and pain center will come back to what we call a normal scenario. Okay. It's easier said than done, but this is my advice. It's the only thing that works. Thank so, you, sir. Yeah. Coffee has been, uh, uh, has been an enemy in your, uh, this thing. So, a lot of uh, coffee drinkers who are, uh, you know, almost addicted or something like that. Like we say tea without tea, I get a headache and all that kind of thing. Right. So right. Uh, is it, a, is it a, a good idea to completely remove a caffe coffee from your uh, life? No, not like I said, if coffee should not be had in the evening, when you, as you get closer to your sleep time, try to avoid having coffee. Okay. okay? Coffee does have a lot of benefits by itself. But it's preferred in the morning and before your lunchtime, and maybe probably at one stop at the evening at, at you know at four or whatever. Okay, so it's it's preferable that you that you switch on to a tea because tea has a lot less caffeine. Yes. So, okay, and uh, like I said, you can't don't stop overnight immediately. Just reduce it. If you're somebody who had five cups of coffee a day, just try to reduce it to three and say, okay, I'll stay at three. Or I'll just have one cup of coffee, uh, you know, maybe probably in the mid after, you know, just between lunch and uh, between breakfast and lunch, I'll just have one. And then try to replace it with something else. Try to replace it with tea, try to replace it with green tea. Uh, you know, find try to find the other things that you can also drink. Yes. Chamomile tea. Uh, there is also burnt wheat. You can make tea out of that. You just burn the wheat on a tawa. And then, uh, and then you just put, you know, when it starts to burn, you just put water in it. Koreans drink that. So you can just try to make a different beverage that whatever you'd like to make, you know, just try to switch it around. So the fact is that you are not depriving, so instead of coffee, you'll have something else. So then the mind doesn't feel that you're punishing yourself, you know. Uh, that should not happen. Once the mind, because the, the pleasure and pain centers out of your control. And it has a mind of its own. Uh -huh. So... Prem Shree Shri yeah. and here. Yeah. Happy New Year, Prem. Happy New Year, Sridhar. Good to see you after a long time. <laughs> okay. This uh, pain and pleasure center, could you just repeat it? I lost some signal in between as I'm okay. traveling. Okay. So, certainly, certainly. So, <clears throat> uh, our minds are... Uh, our minds are, are built on, on these... These are what helps us balance life. There's a pain and a pleasure center. Okay? Now, pain center, we all know. If you fall down or you hurt your knee, you scrape your knee, the pain center is going to go up. Okay? And it's going to excrete hormones and a whole lot of cortisol is going to get out, adrenaline is going to... Now, to counter that, okay, there is always the, the, the counterbalance for it is the pleasure center. Okay? And uh, uh, a lot of other hormones are secreted so that they stay in a balance. Now, the whole idea of the brain is, or the emotional level of, is for you to have both centers at the same level. Okay? 
Now, uh, for any addiction that people might have, maybe alcoholism or maybe just give an example, uh, you know, narcotics or even uh, tobacco or smoking or whatever, it always pushes the pleasure center higher. Because immediately you get, or I have, maybe I'll have 10 jalebis, my pleasure center goes up. But as the body functioning, it wants to maintain the pain and the pleasure center. So the pain center climbs up to match the pleasure center. But as you know, once you've eaten your jalebi or you've had your cigarette or you've had uh, whatever it is, after some time, the effect of that pleasure will wear down. It will come down. It will start to drop. So what happens is your pain center is quite high. And so what happens, your pleasure center has to go and push itself up again. So the pain center uh, takes babe, a longer babe, time to, to come. Sorry to... Yeah, go ahead. Just stop, sorry, sorry to stop you. See, I understand the pleasure center because I'm getting a, gratific a gratification on doing something. It right. could be, as you said, smoking or drinking or whatever you want, you like to do. But yeah. so, what, what is the role of this pain center that I'm not able to... Why should pain so, center match the pleasure center? Well, that's how biologic, that's how we are made. I mean, that's how, that's how the science of the body is. Okay, it has, it is always an equilibrium that has to be maintained because one monitors the other. That's the whole idea. See, what happens, I'll give an example. If you do not have the, the pain center controlling this, you will die of laughter. It can happen that you will die because of laughter. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you'll find this very significant in people who have schizophrenia okay and they are not able to control a lot of their pleasure and pain centers because they swing off the balance so the body actually starts to do something else it start the mind creates uh, you know a different kind of distorted uh, version of reality for itself to manage this problem okay so you'll find that the harm motion so the pain center is actually controlling the, so that you don't die of laughter the pleasure center is there so you don't die of crying you 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 getting to understand my point. Okay, yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Is, now, okay, so one is controlling the other, so it has to be in that equilibrium, so that you don't your mind doesn't go off into a fly off into panic or you know into some kind of uh, seizure or whatever. So it's it's a protection mechanism. Okay, but the only problem is pain center takes longer to fall than a pleasure. A pleasure center goes up quickly and it comes down quickly as well. So, so yeah. that's why we, when our pain centers are a threshold is very high, we keep trying to pump it up. And that's why an addiction becomes so difficult to give up. So the only it way to do it is... Your euphoria, yeah. Yeah. And the euphoria that you need becomes more and more and more every time. As you can see in the cases of people who are, you know, get addicted to drugs, they start taking more and more serious drugs as they go forward. You know, they, get, they graduate into something more and more and more. That's why to start getting into drugs itself is a, is a very uh, is a very tricky situation because it's not a, just a physical addiction it's more of this the the you know the pain and pleasure center taking over so it's more of a mind thing so that's why it is extremely dangerous if it was physical then you can just administer some kind of you know drug or some or some kind of medicine and counterbalance it not so easy so so that and so the the only remedy is bring if you have something you are addicted to, reduce it slowly so that you can bring the pain center in stages as you brought it up, in the same stages you bring it down. It's the only remedy for this. Thanks, Rinder. That was a very, very good question. Thanks. Superb. Thank you. I, I got the point, Prem. I really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so, Amit has dropped off because uh, 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 Amit uh, is a uh, monk in the Niskan uh, temple and uh, he, he is fast approaching his sleep time. So he's had to drop off because at about 8.20, he starts to feel sleepy already because he has to get up at 3.30 in the morning. And, and Prem, so, just one, one more question, Prem. Sorry to, sorry to hold no, you. No, no, you can go ahead. I have enough time. Not an issue. Yeah, yeah. See, the, see I, I, work, I work in a very stressed environment where I need to decide uh, cases uh, which comes to me quickly. Okay. And uh, it's like 12 hours, 14 hours, I put my hard work. So my brain is not going to sleep uh, very soon. Like whenever I go to bed, I automatically uh, open up uh, YouTube or any interesting videos that I like. 
and uh-huh. my, my brain is not just my my brain is not uh, obeying me and it is not going to sleep it wants some stress relief stress busters to watch something and it simply is refusing to go to sleep okay. so sleep sleep is sleep apnea is the only uh, biggest uh, threat i see which i am not able to control food largely i am able to control okay okay but uh, sleep uh, very very difficult to uh, control the is there okay. any practical solution yeah so yeah so like i said uh, <clears throat> the practical solution is uh, make one first thing is make sure you don't have a heavy dinner okay yeah your dinner has to be the lightest meal and your breakfast has to be the heaviest meal so whatever you have for breakfast half lunch whatever for lunch half dinner you can stack in the, in in between that's not a problem if you give yourself about a 3 hour gap every time you eat something just make sure there's a 3 hour gap then you you're good to go and as the day progresses get to smaller quantities so if your dinner is your lightest meal that's the greatest thing you can do after i mean uh, early evening which is say after 6:30 or 7 o'clock try to avoid having coffee if you if possible okay or any stimulant uh, even if it's a cola or what i'm i'm not saying that you do do it uh, but just stay away from any stimulant after about 7 pm okay uh, so it again comes relates to our topic today is cortisol so cortisol levels might be high and you're not able to put yourself to sleep so the two things is once you've you've actually gone to build on your requisite profile of protein uh, carbohydrates fats minerals that you need in your body then the body is ready to fall asleep to repair itself number one number two provided you have not made your heaviest meal or dinner this will this will help okay number 3 is try to if you're going to watch something uh, even if you have to watch something to get yourself to sleep watch something funny and uh, watch something funny don't watch something that's too intellectual or listen to some you know light music or watch some concert that you can find on youtube anything that's relaxing gives you a smile okay that will definitely help bring your cortisol level down and that should help i mean it's not the ultimate cure uh, that's one and i do do recommend that if you if you are familiar with the herb ashwagandha it's something that you can take it's also uh, highly recommended uh, which you can take about an hour before you gone to sleep uh, it doesn't have it's uh, it's a uh, it, it won't affect any kind of profile uh, you know if you have high blood sugar or anything it's quite a neutral herb to have but it definitely helps reduce that cortisol it helps relax the body also completely so you may want to take one of them uh, as a suggestion another thing you can do is uh, if you have a hot shower in the in the evening it will also help you fall asleep faster uh, try and use uh, you know body body wash which has lavender if you can get a little bit of lavender essential oil you can put it on your pillow uh, maybe you can drink chamomile tea anything that has a nice fragrance to it will also help the the body reduce the cortisol because these uh, aromas also affect the pleasure and pain centers so so the, the i mean it uh, uh, so flavonoids and uh, you know and these the these smells also do affect a lot of your body so your olfactory nerve also uh, stimulates a lot of a lot of things that happen in the body i'm sure if you smell something nice uh, when you when you, if the food smells nice suddenly your appetite goes up so so you can't discount the fact that your 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 smelling sense plays a vital vital role in how your life goes through also it it does affect you so try to try to i mean you can only try it i know with a lot of hits and misses you'll you'll find what is actually working for you but i definitely recommend keeping your dinner the smallest meal try to pack as much earlier in the day that's when you need the energy and hopefully that when you come to the end of the evening you you're not really hungry and you can you can actually that will help you sleep but if your body is going to digest food at the moment you're trying to sleep it will not let you sleep because it's it's busy trying to work hard and digest the food so it can it can hinder your sleep and definitely don't take practical is take a sleeping medicine 
uh, melatonin and all of that, but I don't recommend it because it becomes, uh, again, an addiction. And then we're back in the pleasure and pain center story again. Does that help, Sridharan? Definitely, definitely it helps. Okay, so if you can, if you get a, a hand on ashwagandha, it will definitely help you. Uh, generally, it will, it slows, it slows you down. You know, in a way, it will, it will, it will suppress the, the need for cortisol and the things that keep you awake. It will, it will keep that at bay. And try to watch something funny, or uh, jovial, uh, listen to music, pleasant tunes, no hard rock and all of that because that will keep you awake. Uh, anything that's pleasant and funny, okay. And if you have a pet at home, then you may want to play with your pet in the, in, if, if the pet is awake in the evening. So relaxing bath, hot water bath is fantastic. It's really good for the senses. Nice lavender or some rose or any kind of uh, aromatic uh, body wash will help. In fact, after your advice, uh, I have started taking Bijay Sar also. Uh, yeah, you okay. Remember yes. I, yeah, yeah. yeah, I do remember. How has that worked for you? Definitely it is better. At least uh, uh, my stress levels have definitely come down. Um, okay. My hunger uh, appetite has really improved. Earlier, okay. if I was hungry, I, it, I couldn't stand. Now I am able to stand better with, with hunger. Okay. At least I am, yes, I am, I am getting hungry and then I am eating. Very good, very good. So it, you don't force yourself to eat. Your body exactly. tells you it's time to eat. That's very good. Yes. That's, a, that's a very, very good sign. I think when the body tells you it's time to eat and it gets a, you know, for me it's a rhythm. I don't even look at my, uh, my watch. I know what time it is because the time I'm hungry, I know what it is. So if that happens okay. to you, that means your clock, your biological clock is now working in a better rhythm. And it is telling you what to do. So now, now you, you are able to, your body is able to talk to you. So that's a very, very good. I'm, I'm glad that has helped. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Sunil, have any questions or uh, any more questions? Sridharan, I'm willing to take. So, Sunil? Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. A lot of uh, info today. Very nice. Yes. Yeah, this is quite a packed one and I was kind of inspired by uh, Amit uh, who seemed to to have some some kind of indication of something not going right. And uh, with a little bit of research, I actually nailed it down and found out that, uh, you know, unknowingly cortisol is affecting all of it. It was affecting me too. And uh, two days ago, I went back to my regime of ashwagandha and I've seen rapid changes in just those two days. You so, also mentioned Arjuna sir for uh, pancreatic uh, this thing. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> Vijay, uh, Vijay uh, sir. Vijay sir. Vijay uh, sir, is it? Not uh, Arjuna sir. No, no. Vijay V or B? If it's, uh, if you go towards the east. It is B. East. Prem, it is, it is B only. Ah. In, in, okay. in ad, ad ads, you can see B only. Vijay sir. Yeah, so it will depend if it's Orissa, Calcutta, then the B will come. As you yeah. come more south, the V will come. So, it, anyway. Uh, as long as we are all having the same thing. Great. Yeah, it helps rebuild the, uh, uh, it helps rebuild, a, you know, if your pancreatic cells have a little bit of life left, uh, this will help, uh, you know, regain, help it regain its growth. What about and type 1 uh, diabetics? No, type 1, you don't have the pancreas, there's nothing left to grow. But there has been some interesting research where they're trying to make gut bacteria they're trying to isolate a gut bacteria that can actually produce insulin for you. Oh, wow. So there's some research going on there. And some are saying maybe we'll have to graft something into the intestine so that it can create insulin. So there's a lot of research going on there. And uh, hopefully they'll make some headway. I, I'm sure if somebody can think about it, then it's always a possibility, is what I think. I mean, that's fine. That's the way. If somebody can even think about it, Something like this, that means there should be some possibility it will happen. Oh, yes. That's it for today. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, so that will not only help type 1, it will also help type 2 people as well. But how far, how long we are down the line, we don't know. Because there are millions of uh, good health, good bacteria in your intestine and they have just about recently, maybe you know, a few months or a few, maybe a year ago, have discovered which 
uh, which microbe in the good bacteria stops the cholesterol from entering your blood. Because there are millions of them. They know that they all collectively they do some good. But which one in particular does what is still a huge science. I mean, somebody to go and sit and document an experiment and then say, okay, this one, you know, out of the hundred elements that you absorb in your body, they have to go document each bacteria and see how it reacts to it. So it's not an easy job. And there'll be a hit and miss because the bacteria might die because it will need a proper environment. And you know, so it's it's uh, so it's an amazing science that's come that's becoming taking forefront, because mankind has now reached its it, the seventh antibiotic is locked up, and if we ever get into that scenario where we have to depend on the seventh antibiotic, then the human uh, race has no defense against anything new. So I think uh, medicine by itself is now uh, trying to promote itself by getting. Uh, more natural ways out of this mess. And good bacteria, gut bacteria seems to be the way the whole world is going because then the world will definitely get off antibiotics completely if they are successful. So it's going to be a continuous research and uh, you know I'm following it as much as I can. Uh, but it's a long way to go, long way to go. But as of now, having good health, a uh, good gut health is a good blanket thing as the, at, the, at the moment. Now, it can help to know which which particular bacteria you need more of and which you need less of. That will probably come as we go into the future. Right now, it's still uh, still a discovering science. So, so anyway, oh. thank you everyone, and uh, I think Thanks, I'll sign Dave. off now. Thank you yeah. very much for your attention, and we'll see you next week, uh, same time, uh, same place. I uh, hope uh, if you guys are not traveling, in case you're unable to catch the uh, the uh, the inner circle next week. Uh, don't forget that there are recordings, and you can go back into the uh, into the site, uh, and you'll find a course called the Inner Circle Vault. Okay, and the Inner Circle Vault has uh, all the recordings of uh, even past ones that are there. And uh, thanks to all you guys who are participating, uh, my uh, my inner circles are getting better and better. So. Okay. Yeah, so you always need an audience because without an audience, you know, you feel uh, you feel like just talking to yourself. So it's nice to have participation and it encourages me to do more. Like I said, uh, if there is any topic you'd like me to cover in, in, in any particular interest, it doesn't not necessarily have to be about food uh, or nutrition or anything. It can be anything that's probably you are having a challenge within life. I'll definitely uh, uh, try to put that in the inner circle in the next week. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Prem. See you. Thanks. Thanks. Next. Okay. Thanks. See you. I uh, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>